Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. Very excited about our guest today. Her name is Jenna Ushkowitz. Good to see you here. Good to see you. Thanks for having I'm me. I'm so grateful. We were uh, gleeking out a little bit before <laughs> because uh, most people don't know this about me, but I am a huge Glee fan, and I'm sure everyone says that to you, but not many probably big jock dudes come up to you and say, I bought a TV yeah. <laughs> just to See, watch Glee. Yeah, that's that's extreme, right? Um, but we, you'd be shocked between the, sure. the tours, um, who comes out and says, and then you have like the men who are like, "This is for my girlfriend." I'm like, right, "Sure right, it right, is, right, exactly. Sure it is." You know, I, my my <laughs> family is. Uh, I'm the youngest of four. My parents were opera majors. They met at Ohio State. Okay. So you have like opera. music. My brother is the number one jazz violinist in the world. No way. He travels with the top jazz musicians in the world. And uh, my sister's a singer-songwriter. So I grew up in a musically talented family. Wow. And I was forced to uh, go to choir. And I actually enjoyed it, though. I was going to say. Um, and then I Secretly. did and then I did the music, like the, the play, the musical play in my in my senior year. I was like, I'm going to go audition. What musical for this. is it? It was called uh, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, it's seven a classic. Brothers, seven Brides, yeah. <laughs> and I was one of like the oldest brothers, and I was terrified because I'd never done theater theater lines dancing on stage but you like, grew up like singing and dancing and yeah i mean but i was kind of like an ego jock like <laughs> oh this is too i'm too cool for this type yeah. of stuff you know i just play sports letterman, wear the letterman jacket exactly and walk yeah so i was a big athlete that was my that was my gift but secretly love music love singing like i appreciate it so much that's great to hear and um glee was like i started watching were you glee. a secret watcher or uh, were you <laughs> I, the girl my girlfriend at the time we would watch it together okay this was back in 2010 so like she made you watch it no but she was like she showed it to me and i was like this is amazing and i was like we gotta watch glee awesome and uh and i didn't have a tv at the time i was living in columbus ohio and i bought a tv so i could watch glee well we appreciate that yeah <laughs> Do it you still have a TV now? I do, yeah. I, I okay. barely use it. I mean, I watch Netflix documentaries. Use off, so. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I might as well throw it away. <laughs> what else? Exactly, That's right? It. And um, yeah, but it's it's amazing. And so you were you were one of the original cast members, right? What? Six seasons. Six full seasons. Like two tours. Two tours. Yeah. Now, what was a normal day like for you? Mm. How many hours? What? Where were you guys? Uh, we were on Paramount, uh, on Melrose, Paramount Pictures, yeah, yeah. which is a magical lot. Um, I was, really we nice. were very lucky to work there because it's smaller, you know, like Universal and all of them are much larger. Yeah. And this is really quaint and like had a lot of movie magic, I felt, yeah, every day. I've been on that set. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. And we had... Uh, I think five stages mm. um, over the course of six years. So it was all um, shot there. It wasn't like at well, a high school. Well, the pilot was was at the actual high school Cabrillo down in Long Beach. Uh -huh. So we would drive down to Long Beach. Um, that's wow. where the big stage is, you know, with the black, you know, bottom. And um, is that where the auditorium is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wow. thank you, the auditorium. Um, <laughs> it was like the stage, um, and we would shoot down there. Um, and then when we got picked up to go to a series, they rebuilt the hallways and the choir room to look. No way. The choir room was much smaller in Cabrillo, like mm -hmm. half the size, but yeah. obviously. You guys grew. And yeah, and you have to have all the cameras and the crew and everything, so it's it was five times the size of what it was. And then we wow. had the auditorium down there. They didn't build the auditorium till I think, the um, second half of season one. So we would drive down to Cabrillo like Every twice day. or three times a wow. week to go do the musical numbers down there. Um, but then they um, built the set here. They did. So they built everything to wow. look like it. We had a full auditorium. That's crazy. It's just yeah. over here. A full yeah. auditorium. Did they I tear know, it down or something? It. Or? Um, it's gone. It was. Oh I went gosh. back like a couple days after we had wrapped and they were taking it down. And wow. it's just like just like that. It's like like brings tears to my eyes. It's so, it was so, I mean, we had so many memories in there and so many moments in there. And I, can only imagine. I mean, 700 musical numbers. 700? <laughs> yeah. 700. Oh, my God. What a dream life. <laughs> It sounds incredible <laughs> to sing and dance and just hang out with your friends yeah, all day. Yeah, I mean, in retrospect, it's it was. I was like, last night, I think I was like, gosh, we had such a cool job. We had such a cool job. Is there a better have, like, job super... you could have had? No, definitely not. What else could you have done that would be better? <sighs> I mean, just we had celebrities. We had John <laughs> had... Stamos. We had Kristen Chenoweth. We had Gwyneth Paltrow. Did you have Britney Spears? We she... did have Britney Spears, yeah, right? and he Gaga. knew. I mean, it didn't get better. Gaga was not on it. But you guys performed her songs a we lot. We did lots of her yes. songs. I did her music video actually, and she was. Um, I remember that. She's amazing. Yeah. Um. No, nothing better actually. I don't honestly during that time. 
everything was like, God, I wonder, it'd be great if we could just do a show where there's no singing and dancing. But now I'm like, where's what? the singing and dancing? Wow. <laughs> yeah, we had super glee days. So essentially like if, on a super glee day, you would go to work at like 6 a.m. on a Monday, 5 a.m. on a Monday. Um, you'd drive to work in the dark. Uh, you'd go to a fitting in the morning to get your clothes set for the next couple of days. Um, and because we had so many costumes, we had so, so many fittings much. all the time. Oh it's not gosh. like, you know, where you go in Mad Men and they have 20 suits. Right, right. Um, we had like costumes. Different stuff, concept, like Lady Gaga style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'd go rehearse the scene. We'd shoot the scene for, you know, eight hours. Then in between, you know, sometimes they would have a van. They'd be like, you have to go to the recording studio today at lunch. So they'd order you lunch. You'd eat it on the way. You'd go to the recording studio on like Highland, which was like 20 minutes, 10 minutes away. You record your song. You have like 30, 45 minutes. You get back to work. You go back in hair and makeup. And then at the end of the day, sometimes they'd be like, well, you we have this musical number tomorrow that you have to learn. So we have dance rehearsal after that. Um, mm. So Super Glee days were the recording studio, the fittings, the shooting, and the um, dance studio. This is amazing. And you guys were constantly recording in the studio songs. Yeah, right? I mean, like, uh, while we were doing one episode, up. they'd be prepping next week's. It's unbelievable. Sometimes we'd have, like, ten songs. I don't know how we did it. I actually don't know. I think we just blacked out and, like, give in to, you know, what you're doing. Because you right. realize w what it is that you were doing for other people. Yeah. It's the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah. But when you're in, like, a Glee bubble working the global. we call it the glee bubble <laughs> because you don't we were working so much we don't see the effect that it's having on people right so it, it that's always like the nicest you're like but you guys oh. you guys were literally changing lives like that's the awesome. impact i mean i have to believe that you were in a big way i mean yeah i mean we have a lot of people because of social media and twitter was just coming out at that time um a lot of people the outreach of just you know underdogs we like to oh, call them so many, yeah. would say like thanks for representing me you saved my life like yeah, right? it's heavy it's heavy and it's a responsibility but it's it was wonderful i mean like i wouldn't change anything it's unbelievable God, <laughs> so jealous i just love that you love clay so much so jealous um <laughs> so tell me about the moment, the audition process, the experience of like hearing, oh, there's this new thing out called Glee that they're casting for. Like, yeah. was it even a big deal? No. Like, it was yeah. just like a new show. Tell me about the process. Okay. And what were you doing before? Because I knew you were on Broadway for a long time. Um, you got five hours? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you have five hours? <laughs> I am. I was doing Spring Awakening on Broadway at the time. And the casting associate in New York casted spring awakening was casting glee we read the script um pretty much our entire cast of spring awakening went in for glee glee and the first auditions usually i think everybody had to sing and you know do the lines for the character sure we didn't have to sing we got like the pass because uh, we were sure. already no, we know you can sing. yeah oh, yeah yeah trained thankfully you're like okay cool <laughs> um there's like a nice respect you're like oh thanks um i went in for tina she had no real description as to what she was. It was Tina, um, was part it of the even Glee Asian Club. Character no, no, wow. no. It's like all my friends went in for that role, and like white, black, everything. We were just all went in for it. And she doesn't have a big part in the pilot. She mm -hmm. has a line, and she stutters. So I literally had to stutter in my audition, and I didn't turn the page so I didn't realize there were, there were two stutters <laughs> so I was like uh, I think it was we're d -d -d doomed and then the second one was like whoa, 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 what so I missed the whoa, 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 what they were like okay let's do the other one I was like what, what is it I don't know so I walked out of the audition I was like well I didn't get that like definitely didn't prep right and <laughs> definitely didn't get it um, I got a call about a month later so it just like went away you know that's what okay. auditions You're are constantly you just doing go. auditions yeah, yeah. Yeah, I call myself a professional auditioner. Sure. Um, I got a call that they were coming, the producers were coming to New York and they wanted to meet me. They said, prepare a song. So I had to sing a song. Um, what song was it? Waiting for Life to Begin from Once on This Island. It's a rare musical. It's like oh, not a very okay. common musical and song that you'll hear. But do people do use it for auditions. It's a good song. Um, I went and I sang. I did the... Uh, do, we're do, do doomed again <laughs> and then whoa, ryan whoa, 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 ryan murphy said yeah exactly <laughs> ryan murphy said um i don't know much about tina yet we haven't figured her out yet uh can you just improv a little bit mm. um and so oh, the first thing that like came to my mind was like well 
my my mom likes me to do like Glee Club because she she thinks it's a good outlet for my stutter. Um, And she had Tourette's at the time as well. They wrote her in with Tourette's. Mm. And so like researching that too, I didn't want to make fun of her, you know, or fun of somebody like that. I just, I wanted to do a true depiction of what I thought that was. Um, So I did that. And then they called me, that went away. It was like another like Month. four. Yeah, it was another like four weeks. And then they said they wanted to bring me to L.A. to test me, which I had no idea what that was. And for people who don't know what that is, um, you go in for the studio of the TV show and then the network, all like the heads. And you go in a room and you just read the same things for them and sing for them. Mm-hmm. And then they get to decide. And there's usually like only two of you left at that point. Wow. So, so they flew deal. me out. It's like a big opportunity yeah yeah once you get to test you know that like you're down to the yeah, wire wow. it could be you or somebody else um it's make or break time yeah yeah <laughs> were you nervous were you scared well here's the thing at this point i i was definitely nervous because any audition i get nervous a mm. little bit but i didn't realize the gravity of what a test meant at that point right so it, it was just Broadway another thing too. like it was, yeah, yeah. yeah it's cool it's like another audition another callback i right. knew like cool um <clears throat> I did get so nervous, though, that on the plane, I broke out in hives on my face. (laughs) It went down by the time my audition happened because I took a red eye after the Spring Awakening show, went and got here in L.A. They put me in Intercontinental. I took a shower, and then I went straight to my audition. So it was pretty um, high pressure fast. You didn't Mm. really have time to think about it. And um, I went in for them, and I read, and Ryan was like, I love that you just made her so positive. And I, that's just who I am. So no. that was part of like, I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, made her I, I mean, I like her. Like, I thought she was cool. Um, <laughs> and then they asked me to do in the test again, um, something like a little less and just do as a stutter instead of Tourette's. So um, that was actually nice and relieving because right. yeah. it gives her accessibility to do more things sure, with sure. the role. Um, and then like 30 minutes after my audition, I got it. I found out I got they it. They said you got it. Yeah. They, called, and they called me. And I was actually with the other girl that I auditioned against. So oh, I like kind of felt so oh, bad, right? It's rough. Heart. But it, it, she was like, you know, this like adorable, like white girl with blonde hair and blue eyes. And I was like, well, it's you or me. We know where it's not personal. Like wow. it's one of us. And it's just preference at that point. Wow. Yeah. You know what she's doing now? I have no idea. <laughs> We used to be Facebook friends, but then oh, I got rid man. of Facebook. So. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, you know, she's a working uh, theater girl, so gotcha, it was all gotcha. good. Cool. And like, who we was, didn't know. wasn't on the We didn't show know. Right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We didn't know at that point either right, right, what right. it was going to be. I just knew that it was like a really cool script. Wow. And you're like, this is. And you knew it was singing and dancing. and Yeah. And I don't network, know right? how much though, because there's only like two or three songs in the pilot. Sure. You know, Don't Stop definitely. Don't Stop Believing was Like there. gives you chills when you. Every time. Like when you read, when I read it and I was like, oh my God, Don't Stop is coming on. It's like. How many times did you guys sing song? that song? Oh, I don't Hundreds. know. <laughs> Hundreds. No, well, we, the first time we shot Don't Stop Believing um, in the pilot, it took us 75 takes to, to actually get it right. What? Why? Um, it's, it's figuring it out. You know, we All have never done a big and, yeah. musical number. There's like crane cameras and they have steady cam cameras. And so it was just about like figuring out a formula and how to get wow. the best shots. And then after that, it was like, you know, you it, it was like clockwork after season four you know, end of season six. Wow. Yeah. You're like, we know it's here. We know it's there. Right. We know it's here. And that's, <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you get the part. You're excited. What are you thinking? Okay. I've got to move to LA now or what's, yeah, I'd always wanted to move to LA. So this was like the perfect excuse to like be put in straight into a job. Mm. You know, you don't have to move out and then like try and find a job. Um, I didn't like, it was really hard for me at first because I left my entire family. I knew nobody out here except for the cast and it was a small cast. It was, yeah. you know, four or five, uh, wait, Leah, Kevin, Amber, Chris, me and yeah, there's five of us. Right. Um, and Corey. Yeah. So six, but Corey came in later. He was in Canada and he couldn't get a visa. So like we were rehearsing without him and then we were like, who is the secret fin? Like, we don't know. And then, uh, finally he came and. Um, he just completed the little group. Nice. We had a great time. We really bonded during the don't stop actually, um, number because there's so much waiting around for the cameras sure. to figure it out. So, uh, we would just play like sit in circles and like ask questions and play games. Or yeah, yeah, it was great. Amazing. Gosh. I'm like so excited about this <laughs> stuff. I'm like such a nerd right now. It's such a time warp because you know, I don't really talk about it a lot. Really? Um, yeah. People don't ask me about it that much anymore. And you know, taking a year, it's finally been actually like a full 
365 days since I've been away from it. Wow. It was, um, you have to like reset yourself. Yeah. After being in something like a machine like that for six years. Now, how did the contract work? Because there were six of the six of you guys originally, and so they they yeah. they booked the contract for like every season. Like this is going to be your rate, or yeah, yeah. You get so basically when you for TV um, before you even test for the network, you have to work out your deal so that if you get it, your deal is already done. Wow, that's what you're getting, and they do it for six years is the normal. Six years, mm -hmm. that same deal. Mm -hmm. There's no TV bonuses. is six years. What if? So I mean, you, you can extend. So then, like, say we did six years, and say that we were all really happy, the show was doing still really well. Um, you get the chance to they say we were going to pick you up for seven. But then I mean, you what renegotiate your contract. What about after the first year, it becomes the number one show on TV, 10 million viewers every time. You can renegotiate. You like There's room to rene renegotiate for really? sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we did we did renegotiate, I think after two season two? I think it was season two, going into three. You guys, um, you guys are working like 17-hour days. I know, it's wild. It's wild. It was... It was great. I mean, like at that point, we were doing we were doing so well that the success wasn't the money; mm. it was just everything else. You guys just blew up. I mean, we went to the White House. We sang at the Easter Egg Roll. What? We went to Oprah. We did Oprah the same weekend. We flew on a private jet from the White House to Oprah. The it X was, Factor. You did yeah, like everything. Yeah, in the, in the UK, we get to go yeah, to like, yeah, yeah. and we went to Australia for like it's just a press tour. We didn't have to do anything wow. except go meet fans. It was, I mean, it's we got to travel the world. We got to go on First class. bucket cl bucket lists, you know, like private jets, Obama, Oprah. Um, Backstage, you where you want to go. Yeah. Meeting celebrities. <laughs> you know, like Johnny Depp's telling you his kid loves the show. Oh You're like, God. what's happening? <laughs> um, yeah, we were all pretty like, they were just like, what what's happening moments every day, pretty much, um, when we weren't working. Wow. The working was the... I mean, we had to remember, too, because of all the flashy things that were happening to us, that it was the work that w got Stay us there. Stay focused. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, which is, you, we really didn't have time to think about it at all because mm. we were just working so much. But all it was, day, yeah. And it's like, we were having fun. We were laughing all day long. There were tough days for sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, by like hour 14, you're like, eyelashes are coming off. <laughs> Your hair is like messed up. I have to sing this up. one more time. People are sleeping. We were like pro sleepers. We could sleep. Anywhere, just anywhere. Taking naps, wow. Yeah. What was the most challenging process? It was six years, right? Mm -hmm. What was the most, and how long would a season last for? Like for ten your work? months. Ten months. So you had mm -hmm. two months off. But yeah, but then we tour. <laughs> so, so we'd have like four weeks, a little, maybe like four weeks before wow. we go back into another season. Do you get the weekends off at least? Yeah, the weekends are ours, but you work at five a.m. on Monday, so your Sunday night is not yours, and you work till like two a.m. on Friday night. So you know your Saturday morning is not yours. Wow. <laughs> You're sleeping. Um, wow. And then sometimes we would have photo shoots on the weekends because that's the only time we could fit oh it in. Oh, my gosh. You guys were like. I know that I think about it. It's like so crazy to me like because I finally had time to like reset my day and, you know, my time is my own. And um, it's weird to think about it again that it really wasn't. And that's OK. I'm OK with it. Like I'm compulsive and I had to really um, be at peace with not, you know, not knowing what was coming and be okay with like the amount of time that we were going to be there. Cause when you're on set, it takes as long, they don't have like, okay, from 10 to two, you're going to shoot the scene. It's from 10 to whenever it's done. Right. So your day can totally get pushed. You're like, yeah. this is taking forever. You can't Things anything. happen. You, you can't know? schedule anything later in the day. No, you can't schedule anything at all. <laughs> Unless it's Saturday night after Saturday 2 night. PM, yep. 2 yep. PM to 10. That's mine. <laughs> That's Jenna's. <laughs> That's it. Wow. So did you even have a life <laughs> at all? Like, um, you ever, did you have a relationship we, during this time? Did I did at the end towards the season two, uh, three, season three and four, I think, and five. I was uh, with uh, a guy who was actually um, on a TV show in Atlanta. So when did you see each other? <laughs> on the weekends, I would fly to Atlanta or he'd fly back to LA. You would fly for a day? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, 24 hours sometimes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you make it work. You're a machine. <laughs> I guess it's like the only thing I really knew during of that course. time. Wow. Yeah, it was okay. pretty it's hard it was hard maintaining a relationship like that. Um but you just that's where your job is. Mm. And like to us our jobs were our priorities along with each other. Yes. Um and we both understood that. So mm. that was 
If you don't, it won't work. How was the dynamic with the, the cast and the crew? Was there a lot of drama? Was it more friendly? Was it? Um, ups and downs. Yeah. I, I like to say, like, we're a family. We yeah. spent 365 days together. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know the ins and outs. You know what makes them tick. You know when to leave them alone. Um, there are days where you're like, okay, I'm not speaking to you today. It's great. <laughs> um, but overall, I think what made the show so successful was the chemistry of the cast. Mm-hmm. Um, it was easier to get along than it was to fight. Um, wow. Yeah. It just, you know, it's just exhausting. And there were fights. There were tiffs. There were moments. And, like, the crew was so wonderful. Mm. And anybody on TV who will understand, those crews have families. Yeah. But they're, they're, they're just as long as you, not longer. 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 Oh, my gosh. So, um, you know, I, I tip my hat to, to crews who do it. I mean, for their whole lives. I just, it's insane. Um, it's thankless. And, and But we had such an amazing crew, and they were so talented, and they would dance with us, and it's such a fun set to be on. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we had, we were a big family. Yeah. Uh, but it was, you know, there was drama, and there was um, it's just a lot of females. <laughs> I hear you. I have um, my... All, almost everyone on my team is female, so <laughs> every you now understand. and then, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I really, um, I'm much more of like I'm a a male guy. Like I get along with men sure, much sure. better than women. I don't have a lot of girlfriends, but uh-huh. um, yeah. So it was like you just adjust yourself to being in this world that you're like thrown into. Sure, sure. Um, but it was great overall. We still all hang out and talk. And sure. What was the uh, if you could think back to one moment that was the most memorable moment for you on set yeah on set in the, in all this how many episodes do you guys do uh over 100 120 115 somewhere okay so out of all those from the uh, first episode to the last what was it? maybe not on set but just from the first episode to the last episode during that time the most memorable in my brain right now um is probably the last scene of the last episode i you know i still haven't finished the last season oh well the last episode <laughs> so t- is tell makes me, what me want to cry tell me what i'm happens. not gonna tell you what happens you have to watch it um we do flash forward we flash forward with um oh. like six or seven of us um which is great i loved it and then we also flash back did you see the flashback no we go back to the pilot, so we all have to get back into like our, no you know, garb. Don't stop believing. And um, yeah, and it's all the things you didn't see during the pilot. So all the scenes in between that got us wow. to where we were in the pilot. It's great. I love that episode too. It was so much fun. It's nostalgic. You know, you're sure. all like, "What is that costume that you're, <laughs> you're like? I saw you that in six years ago. It's <laughs> so wild." Um, but yeah, the last scene we shot was Matt Morrison's song in the finale, and he sings it to all the new Glee Club and then the old Glee Club that came back. Ooh, I don't wow. even. Um, and I have the um, clip of it that I was watching the other day, and I like was just I just like wrote down because it's he's a great singer too, amazing. And him breaking down when you see a grown man cry oh like that, it was oh, it's the worst. Um, <laughs> Oh my gosh. And like, we're just bawling and we're not supposed to be like, it's not the end of the episode. We're shooting a scene that's like in the middle and we're all like a mess. It's the last day. Um, Matt's going around with, you know, ukulele, like singing and, and looking at us and we're all just like, Ugh! Leah is grabbing my hand so hard. So this is like authentic. This isn't acting. This is like, yeah, it was very real and it's still maybe like, I did see this part. Maybe I did see oh this. I'm not sure. God, it's the <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but I loved it. I loved it. So how many times did you shoot that scene? We did it um, like, th- I want to say like six or seven times he probably wow. did that song. But the last one we were like, to our director, Brad Beaker, um, he, we were like, can you just tell us when it's the last one? Right. So you know uh, that Just you so we like- knew we could appreciate like that was it. And just like looking around the room, oh I was like, gosh. what's happening? Like, so that I was the last time you in that room, the last yeah, time. Yeah, that, that you were going to hear like um, action and cut. Like on the show. It was great though. Wow. I love that. That was like one of the best moments. What was the most challenging moment? <laughs> there was one episode. Did you see uh, Rocky Horror? Yes. Uh, so we did the Rocky Horror episode. Adam Shankman directed. He's a great friend. He's wonderful. Um, we were in costumes and like sequin costumes. I was in tap shoes and like a horrible wig. I hate wigs. I'm a terrible theater girl. I know we all have to wear wigs and I hate them. Um, and it was like, 
I don't want to say we were on hour like 16. <laughs> like we were almost there. Wow. We were doing the time warp. And I remember like in between <laughs> um, this like huge number, you know, with all these characters and all this choreography. And we had probably shot three other numbers earlier in the day um, and a scene. And I just remember like, the tears starting to well. I was like, just want to go home. Really? Yeah. And like, there's a couple of people like uh, who would never complain. They would never complain. And when you'd see them get like to their you're like, point, oh. you're like, this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is really bad. It was just the hours. It was, yeah. um, it's like just being no in that place for, yeah. And if you're having a bad day, just that being immersed in that place is like oh. the last place you want to be, but you have to be there. So, you have to learn how to like bring yourself back to a happy place. Right? Wow. Okay. Yeah. I could. I feel like I could ask you questions about <laughs> the show constantly. Um, we'll have to do it afterwards to save everyone who doesn't care about the show. This is more for my selfish reasons. Uh, I'm curious. You know, you were adopted, right? You were born in South Korea, right? I was, as far as I know. But you were there for a few months. Is that right? Three months. I was in foster care until, or in the with the agency with the foster mom. Gotcha. Mm-hmm, until. Uh, they brought me over August 21st, 1986. It's called Plain Day when my parents got me a JFK. <laughs> sure, sure. And um, yeah, I was three months old. And um, I've ever since then, I can, I was their little gift from God. Mm. Never really um, thought of it any other way. It was just part of who I was. Mm. Like I was saying yesterday when I was um, talking to my best friend Sam who's also adopted I was like yeah I just it never it was just a part of me and like when people ask me like tell me about yourself I'm like well I'm Jenna my last name is Ashkowitz and I was adopted and that's it you know it's right. just like part of sure my little bio right, right. <laughs> my where, bi- life bio where do you think you'd be if you weren't adopted <laughs> on the rice paddies somewhere <laughs> And I don't know if I, I read Korea, the, I don't know. I don't know if I read this. I don't know if I, I might have skipped it or missed it. But have you, have you connected with your biological parents? I or? haven't. Um, it's actually, um, I'll tell you an interesting story. Um, I grew up in New York with my friend, Samantha, and she was adopted as well. Everything was all good and kosher and happy. We ate bagels and, <laughs> 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 um, she found out she had a twin, um, sister that when she was 25 is yeah, this where i saw yeah. a video about this yeah she wasn't aware of it or something? yeah she didn't know but they found each other on facebook they did and she's it's an actress crazy. and he found the video and was like why does that look like me so she no messaged way. her and they are identical twins that's insane crazy anything is possible wow. <laughs> um so at that point we started a foundation um it's called the kindred foundation for adoption kindred and um it's to aid adoptees around the world to give them something that we didn't have. We didn't have growing up. We didn't have anybody that represented us. We didn't have anybody to talk about it with. And um, not that I needed to, but others do. And I'm finding that out very quickly. Yeah. So uh, we started the foundation. And out of that, I was like, maybe I should do my search. These other brave adoptees are coming to us asking, where do I start my search? And I thought, like, maybe I should. Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody knows. So right, that's right. what we're there for is to wow. now start, you know, help them, guide them in the right direction. Okay. Um, so did you start your search? I started it. So and I'd never really wanted to do it. I felt very fulfilled. I felt loved and supported yeah, my great, whole life. Parents, my parents are amazing. There for you. Yeah. Um, and they, um, I asked my dad, I was like, hey, I kind of like want to search my parents. When was this? About a year ago? Yeah, a little less. And how old are you? Am I um, I'm, yeah, I'm 29. <laughs> it's in Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. I look 18, so it's okay. Exactly. So 29. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't ask your parents or mention this until you were 29. Yeah. So about who my biological people ask me parents. all the time. They're like, right. why do you, you know, do you, do you find your parents? Like your right, birth right. parents? No. Like, eh. No. So this is like a shock to them. Um, And we haven't really gotten in depth because I, you know, the search went on pause. But I asked my dad, I said, do you have my information from the agency that I was adopted from in Korea? And he did. Um, He also then decided to share with me that he heard when I was brought over that my dad was in the military. And I didn't know which one. Like, I don't know if he's in the Japanese military or the Korean military. I don't know. Right. Um, because I did 23 and me, which you like spit in the tube and they tell you your genealogy. Mm-hmm. And I'm 33% Japanese. And I thought I'd 
been growing up for 29 years thinking I'm 100% Korean. Wow. Um, so that sparked something. I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's something I didn't know about myself. And then um, I started the search. They came back to me with all this information to fill out. And I like freaked out. <laughs> and not in a bad way. I just, I'm not ready. Why not? And part of that is I'm so busy right now to process something like that. I just need more time. You're, you're, you're more busy now than you were during Glee? Yeah, believe it or not, really? I've stayed quite busy. <laughs> between the foundation, between the podcast, between trying to get another job and like picking. I did, mm-hmm. I did two movies in New York in like September and November. So yeah. like, you know, that takes a lot of my headspace. Sure, sure. Um, it's just a matter of like, yeah, I, I, I am, <laughs> what if, what if <laughs> which this, is great. What if this is the new job? I mean, part of it will be the building the brand. What if, the, what yeah. if this is the documentary that helps support the foundation and is the Kickstarter yeah. for yeah. creating awareness? I mean, 100%. Selling it to Netflix, you know, exactly. the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I, think I still great. need the the acting <laughs> because it feeds my soul in a way none of these things can. Mm. But um, I definitely, this is part of it. This mm. is the in between that. Sure, sure. So it's the okay. on off, on off. Interesting. But yeah, I, so I, I paused and I said no. I also like in my heart think for some reason, I've always thought my mom was dead, passed away. Mm. Um, and I don't know if that's in my conscious at peace with her being away yeah. or if she really is and I can feel it. You know, hmm. they say like twins have feelings. And so deep, maybe yeah. I have that with my birth mother. Wow. I don't know. You never thought what they were doing? Or if they, I if wondered if well, I always wonder about nature versus nurture. I wonder where I get my musicality from because um, the sure. home I grew up in was not the most musical. They put me in. Obviously, I trained my whole life, yeah. but um, they weren't. They're not very musical, um, and they weren't in the business at all until I came along. So, so you were dancing and singing all day long. Yeah, I mean, they put oh. me in when I was three. So I've been in the business since I was, right. you know, a tot. <laughs> it's just like part of what I do and who I am. Sure. But it's, I mean, I love it. I would, yeah, I wouldn't trade it. Like a lot of people do ask as well, like, or I guess not anymore, but um, do you feel like you missed out on a childhood? Mm. Do you? No, no. I feel like that was my childhood. That was yeah. supposed to be my childhood. Yeah. I was <laughs> singing on Broadway. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. That's Lucky. a long, that's long hours nine. too, right? Um, in the beginning, so when I was in The King and I, when I was nine, um, it's a six week rehearsal process uh-huh. that you get to learn the show. So I was tutored during that time. Yeah. There were 14 kids. We had a blast. And then when you do the show, um, it's just eight shows a week at night. So I lived on Long Island. My parents would drive me in every day. They bought a minivan so I could sleep on the way home so I could go to school in the morning. Oh, uh, wow. Um, but it wasn't way, I mean, I had school during the day and then I'd do my homework on the way in and then do the show. And that was like playtime for me. Yeah. So, yeah, right. I wasn't m- quite as taxing as doing a Broadway show now. <laughs> right, right. What's something uh, someone listening or watching should know about wanting to get into the industry, wanting to be an actor or maybe what are some, <sighs> some things like some simple principles that you yeah. can say for and this could relate to people that are giving speeches. A lot of entrepreneurs that give big presentations that speak in front of large audiences. Maybe what's a ritual or something that you tell yourself before you're about to audition, get ready for a scene, mm-hmm. whatever, be on stage. What are some things you do? Um, in terms of auditioning um, or going to speak or singing um, beforehand, I, I I don't know if I can curse on this. I won't curse, but I say <laughs> F you, F you, F you. Um, huh. before I go and I say the nerves aren't going to do me good. So like go away. So you're saying that to the nerves to myself. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> to like calm myself down Yes. Um, when you don't have beta blockers. <laughs> 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 um, a lot of actors do because they get so incredibly nervous that they take beta blockers before to like calm suit. the nerves, but, uh, mine don't get that bad. So yeah, I say F you, F you, F you, um, like I'm only going to succeed if I'm at my best. Mm. Um, and that's the mindset I try to go into auditions with. I also, uh, for actors, it's leave your day at the door when you go in for auditions. Leave your day. Nobody wants to know about what that happened before or after. Um, right. Show up and be a You pro. go in and you, yeah. Yeah, you do your thing. Um, whether you're having a good or a bad day, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think also it's just about 
knowing that what you are bringing is enough and uh, that it's not about the jealousy of others. It's not about the other success. Um, it's just really about focusing on what you have to give and what you have mm. to bring. And um, I think that's also important to say like, I'm, they're lucky to have what I'm bringing yeah. as well as like, You're yeah, like, please cast me, right, right. <laughs> give me a job. Um, <coughs> and cause like, I feel like people can smell the desperation when you go too far. It's, it's like, it's not attractive no. and it's not, a, you know, not a good look. <laughs> it's the same thing in relationships. Yeah. You know, and yeah. getting a job. If you're like desperate exactly. to get a job, desperate to get the girl. Right. The girl's it's, like, it's, get away from me. Yeah. You're like, uh, you know, it's when you don't cool. need, it's when you don't you need, need it, anything. They give it to you. It, pours on you you for free yeah Yeah, you get like three movie (laughs) offers instead of just one and you're like of course so how do you get that mentality how do you switch it when you're when you don't have anything maybe when you're not getting the jobs how do you be like well i really need the job because i need to make some money yeah you have Uh, to find other things to feed your soul to keep you happy and that's something mm. i struggle with every day this business Mm. is everything that i am it is your life. It is my life. It is me. I mean, and that's that I have to separate and remember that what I'm bringing is taking me another step to where I need to be. Mm. Um, it's all, a, you know, a nice maniacal plan that I have set out. Even I like to like try and think because I am enough and I, mm. and I work so hard so it will pay off. It's just not the right timing. You know, it has to be the right thing in the right moment. Um, it's all a little bit of luck, a little bit of talent. And, you and maybe know. you're not ready for certain things either. Yeah. You, know, you yeah. don't want to get a big role and then blow it because you're not right. prepared. Prepare. You don't have the, the yeah. skills, the tools yet to really like exactly. show up in a powerful way. Exactly. But, you know, while I'm waiting, <coughs> I have to remember that the things that I'm doing are part of the bigger mm, picture. Of course. Yeah. What's the bigger picture for you? Um. What's your vision? <laughs> I in, Successful enough of an actor that I'm able to do these things without worrying about where the next job is, where the money's coming from, where, um, by coastal, you know, being able to like keep two places and just be able to pop back and forth when I need, um, keeping with the foundation and potentially just building a brand. I think it's, um, it just well rounds you. Mm. It's also because I feel like I have a very strong business woman in me that I don't mm. get to, expel with acting so you know right right <laughs> write a book and do this a podcast is, and by the way <laughs> you get, the book you have i haven't mentioned it yet it's called choosing glee it came out a couple of years ago 10 rules to finding inspiration happiness and the real you i love it because a lot of pictures for me it's hard to read so there's a lot, a lot of cool <laughs> pictures uh, i mean you, the pictures were for me you know? exactly. <laughs> but it's just great you make sure a lot of great lessons and stories and you bring in stories from all your cast members and other people that inspire you which i think thank is, you is yeah really this cool. is the the book was really um the kickstarter for this whole i think brand if you will yeah, right. um That's it so kind cool. of started because it was me really actually honing in on the idea that i realized that not everybody is very positive and mm. not everybody thinks the way that i do you're very positive yeah Yeah, and it's just been a part of who i am my mm-hmm. whole life uh, i've always just looked on the brighter side and the been very grateful so now it's all about practicing it. it's practicing gratitude it's practicing mm. patience it's everything has to be um mindful mm-hmm. you know i'm aware of it now it's not just a part of like and if I can impart that on other people and because people are like, how do you do it? I don't know. I just do it. Mm. But now it's sort of figuring out where it came from. Well, that's it's the like thing. therapy. That's <laughs> it. You know, I was doing a workshop last night for a group of female models and uh, I was talking about, you know, the importance of practicing gratitude every day for me is huge. When I wake up every morning, mm-hmm. I say what I'm thankful and grateful for. Mm-hmm. Before I go to bed at night, I tell my girlfriend three things I'm grateful for for the day and I ask her the three things. And I think when we're constantly in the practice of gratitude. Mm-hmm. It's hard to be angry and resentful and passive aggressive yeah. and un, you know, frustrated at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely something to, um, resetting, setting your day up yeah. to succeed, yeah. to be grateful, to be, um, patient, to mm-hmm. be kind, to be, you know, it's just the little acts of kindness. It's like, um, I don't know if you know AJ Jacobs. Oh yeah. He's amazing. He wrote a quote on the back of my He's book. That yeah, yeah. He's that coolest. He's a great guy. Um, he came on my podcast and he, you know, he did the living biblically and uh-huh. he had to be grateful. So he would always say like, 
um, thank you elevator for getting me to the floor that I have <laughs> right, to get right, right, to. Right. And I always think about that because you think about all the things that go wrong in sometimes. your day, yeah. but you don't think about all the things that go right. Yeah. So um, it's just about and the flipping things going it. right. Like you woke up. Exactly. It's another day, you're you're blessed I mean, there to wasn't have a day. humongous earthquake in California. Right? Do you exactly. know what I mean? You you have your, I mean, well, I have my five senses and I have my fingers and I have my Everything. legs. Everything. Yeah, I've got a buddy of mine who was born without arms and legs, and he oh is climbing a mountain right now <laughs> on his elbows. Of course he is. That's he's climbed the Mount best. Kilimanjaro before. <laughs> He's fought in like a cage fight with an able-bodied person. He's he done can. CrossFit because he's like he can. Yes, and uh, I'm like, there's I love no it. excuse. There's no excuse. When someone like that, there was somebody running something. a marathon. My friend was telling me he was running a marathon. He did the New York um, City Marathon just once. <laughs> he's like, never do it again. <laughs> and um, there was somebody. He's one of the kindest people that I know, and most grateful people that I know. Yeah. So he. Um, it says, cheer me on, on the back of this guy's shirt that he's running next to. And he's like, you know, good job, Pedro. He just, like, said that. And the guy next to him on this side goes, thank you. Because Pedro was blind, running oh, wow. a marathon. I just love it. That's it makes crazy. Those kind of things are, like, so cool. And um, sweet reminders. Yes. Now, what was a non-negotiable for you or a ritual routine that you had to do every single day? during the glee experience was there anything <laughs> or was it just give up things that you wanted to to serve the the cause of the show you mean like, like waking up rituals yeah, anything was there anything you did like in the morning in the afternoon you're like i have to eat at a certain time <laughs> i have to meditate every day i have to at least take 20 seconds to, to write something down i didn't i didn't i wasn't so mindful during glee mm. because we were so it was chaotic um involved yeah i mean really that the the every day was going to work and yeah. being there there were times though um in the middle of it that like there were just so many of us that the storylines weren't happening for me and i was getting really, really frustrated and like what, something what had to that? change like you weren't connecting with the character you weren't well they weren't writing for me so like i would have like one line in a, a script so like, and you sit there but you here? have to be there because you're all in the choir room so you're not expending your creative energy that's where the book came from it was finding things to um keep me at peace while i made you know i did my job and mm. did it well with a smile on my face but weren't as prominent a figure maybe right or yeah yeah just in the background used. yeah that's you tough. feel like they're bringing you're a new cast under members constantly used. right yeah there's, so, there's like 18 of us and then they're putting them as the, everyone has like a focal point storylines yeah exactly so the shift goes and there you, wow. every you have your time and then you don't and I just Tough. don't feel like I ever really, ha I didn't at that point feel like I had my time at all. Um, Do you feel like forgotten almost? or Yeah, a little underappreciated um, for how hard I work and watching some other people, not the cast, but like you see other people who don't work quite as hard and still get more than you. And you're like, what is, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. And it's truly not about that. It's, it's, you know, now in retrospect, I look at something like that and it's not, again, it's not about what you're doing wrong. It's just about what other people are doing. And, right. Um, but I did, we always had to have coffee. We always like to go to lunch together. We, right. um, we all really like to try and eat lunch together. That's cool. At least a few of us at a time. Yeah. Um, if you go to, if we went to restaurants and like all of us, it number one took too long and number two, we'd be Get bombarded. Swarmed. So yeah. yeah, I actually got like, we got, um, we were at in and out last night and somebody came up and I, it's been a while. Like people come up to us, but, when we're together, when there's like two or more. They don't come to you when you're by yourself or something? They, you know what? People are less likely to come up to you if you're by yourself. I don't know. Maybe it's something I give off because I'm like I an introvert it. and when I get I, so weird. When but I was at the airport. Actually, um, you did. two, I've met three of you now, the <laughs> group of you. Well, oh, gosh, what's his name? Which one? Um, what? Who's the guy that came on in like second or third season uh, who was a gay character? Darren or Chris? Yes, Darren, Darren. Chris, yeah, right? Yeah. I saw him at a <laughs> – I walked on a plane, and I just saw him sitting there, and I was like <laughs> – I just put my fist out. I go, dude. <laughs> I just go, bro, you're the man. I That's go, awesome. You're the man. A pound him was like, That's a good person to do it, too. And He'll I, definitely he goes, be like, thanks, dude. He goes, thanks, bro. Right? Thanks, bro. <laughs> thanks, man. And I just walked back. I was like, the man. Yeah, he's like that. He, he's, um, he's a great one to approach. Yeah. Um, I get like scared. I'm like, oh my God. No, I, I, I've said hi to everyone I've met at Glee. I'm just like, <laughs> I, love you. You. I love you. I love you. You're amazing. Because, you. You, you know, I, 
you know, I, I'm not anywhere at the level of like recognition that you guys have, but whenever I'm out, I really appreciate it. Like when New York or LA people are like, dude, I love the podcast. I listen yeah. to it all the time. I'm like, I appreciate it. And that's I want to like give someone a hug because I don't know who's listening. Right. It's like, you right. don't know that's who's true. watching. You really don't. You don't know unless they say something. Right. Right. And it's obviously true. there's a time and a place probably. You, Definitely. You know. See, I love when like, like last night she came up, she says, I'm from New York. I'm just really happy to see you guys here and we miss you on TV. Oh. And that was it. No ask for a photo, nothing like that. Not that I'm against yeah, photos yeah. or anything, but there's um, a level of respect when somebody just goes and they want nothing from it. Right. Of Do course. you know? Yeah. You appreciate it's, it more. You're like, oh, that's so nice and tasteful. Uh, now, what was it like um, when you were on the show? Because I'm assuming you weren't really well known before. You didn't have Mm-mm. this recognition walking down the street. No. So what was it like when all of a sudden people, w- w- anytime you go down the street, they're like, they noticed you, they said something <laughs> that came up to you. What was that like for you? Actually weird. Getting this, <laughs> getting this fame and this recognition. Yeah. It went, it was weird. Um, most of it was great because... You know, you don't see that. And, and mm-hmm. we don't know for what we're doing is right. We know that the ratings are good. And right. we know that, you know, the critics like it. But it's the fans that keep you going. Right. Um, and they were just the most... It was a different group of fans. Mm. We started to get high school students who were saying, we're starting glee clubs. Or Crazy. you brought music back into my school. Crazy. Or you saved my life. I came out. I'm gay. Like, it was just mind-blowing how many social issues were brought up in the show that then could be talked about you know in the world and so um it was really great and and cool and they'd be like we love glee and we were just (laughs) so weirded out by it number one because you're like cool number two they'll call you by your character name a lot (laughs) in the beginning like because they didn't know us so I still get called Tina. Tina. I, I, it's okay. Like, I'm cool it's with hard, it. It's hard because no one knows. Yeah. And then some fans name. will be like, her name's Jenna. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. It's okay. We don't need to fight. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's um, it's interesting. You And especially because of social media. Mm. Like, your life is not private. private. Yeah. And it's weird. And you share things and then people think that they have the right to everything. Some people do. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it gets scary sometimes, you know, like you don't think about things like when you get packages shipped to your house, you have to change the name. I can't put Jenna Ashgrove because then people know where I live. Oh, wow. So it's things that you don't think about and things that you don't realize are like, oh, I don't want somebody knowing my apartment number. Of course. Somebody yeah. showing up at my or door. In the neighborhood, maybe. Yeah, like driving a car and they follow you home. You know, like things wow. like that. It's it doesn't. It never really got that crazy for me. But um, there, I had Stop fraud chart. You know, like my email. I had to change my email. It's just crazy wow. little things that you don't think about. Wow. Yeah. Who do you think um, experienced the biggest transformation of being unknown to like? The biggest fan. Chris. Chris Colfer um, really? was 19 when we started the pilot. And the two of us would drive to work every single day together because we didn't really have anybody else. We'd hang out after we were done with rehearsal. We'd go like walk around the Grove or walk around the Beverly yes, Center, I love the which Grove. we could do at that time. At that time. <laughs> now you can. Um, yeah. yeah, it was appreciated at the moment. We didn't realize. but um, And we would just hang out. And he was from Clovis, California. And for people who don't know that, it's a very small town. Wow. He was picked on, bullied. Um, he was he didn't come out before the show came out. What? No, he wasn't out when we were doing the pilot. Really? Yeah. I thought he was always. Um, wasn't he a gay character on the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't come out as gay. Mm-mm. Until later. I just assumed that he was. Yeah, I know. And wow. so he, uh, yeah. Told me. Yeah, it was a big transition for wow. him to come into a big city. And then and come then, out. And then come out on TV as oh well. It was one of those times where you're like, okay. And so when he did that, um, I mean, God, the kid is so strong. Wow, well, <laughs> yeah. Crazy. And so smart. Um, Talented. It's crazy. <laughs> but he was, you know, a genius. He's, we're all going to work for him one day. Like, wow. it, it basic, we basically are. Um, he, he became this icon, gay icon on TV for all those kids who didn't know how to come out Mm -hmm. i mean the amount of you know response that he got from these people and now he's literally a gay icon like elton john like loves him (laughs) it's amazing but he shot in so fast faster than any of us and um yeah i definitely we saw it and it was you know (laughs) it's a lot it's a Mm -hmm. lot for somebody who's young sure come just out of high school yeah, of and course. then like shot at least like we were you know 
we had like fans in Spring Awakening and we were sort of used to stuff yeah. like that. It we was cool. Yeah, it's yeah. good. But for him, I think it was the biggest. Right. Now, when, um, what season and episode uh, did Corey pass? Corey passed away um, in the break of season um, four to five. Mm. Yeah. In between. Yeah. We were like a week away from going back to, to work mm. and then we had to postpone. Um, and like most of us found out, like I found out I was out at a bar in New York and I, you know, you think it's like a hoax when you, the celebrities so, come up and they like die. Yeah. Uh, and, and we thought it was a joke. And then when I started to see like that, it, yeah. other people were reporting about it, um, all my friends, all the cast was here in LA. So I was like by myself oh, man. and Cord was in New York, thankfully and Harry too. So like we met up that night, but, um, yeah, it was a shock. We didn't know. Wow. We didn't really know. He kept uh, one of the. We didn't know that he was going. Cause well, he was we knew rehab. he was going through. Yeah, he's we knew rehab, he was in right? rehab. He came out of rehab and then passed away after he left. So we didn't. We thought he was on the mend. We thought yeah. he was on the way up. And um, he. We really didn't know during the time either. Like, for me, he kept his like he kept his enemies his own. It never affected us. It never affected work. It never affected. Really? Yeah. He it was, was on non- set. He was focused. He yeah. Was, and so it was kind of wild to like a shocker. have something drop like that so fast. Wow. Um, and it really hurt us to, I don't, you know, I, it's beyond words. Wow. The, um, the experience that, that emotional experience for us. Thankfully we all had each other and it actually, um, the the good that came out of that was like we had pretty a lot of us had separated from each other we were doing our own things we were having our own projects you know um really brought us back together like so fast and we yeah it definitely i mean i don't know if we would be the same and as close and as tight um if he was still around wow because you guys all had your own your own fame that was getting yeah. your, your own opportunities yeah. records exactly movies, tv whatever everything so for us it was like we wow. were doing our own stuff and you know we we're still fine everybody was great but like it's something it that you unified. stick now like Holy we cow. went through something tragic and you only come out together stronger he was like the that. lead Right? I mean, he was whole- our quarterback. He was our dude. He was the light of the show. He was the um, heart. Mm. You know, he was our leader, and we all looked to him. Was he a, a, the real leader in real life too? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, so you just just, the like, just because he was tall, like, you know, I'm just he was uh, he's just a presence. Mm-hmm. And it was so just wonderful to have. He made people laugh and he would throw, like, they would have rap parties for us, but then they would be like, he would throw, like, a house rap party for the At cast and crew. Yeah. And, the like, on the just Hills. throw them. Yeah. yeah. And it was awesome. And everybody was so appreciative of that wow. because he was always so appreciative and he never complained. Gosh. Yeah. You just never know sometimes. You really don't. It makes you really think about your life. <laughs> wow. And think about. What happened um, for you after that? You know, for me, like a part of the show died when Corey died. And that I think a lot of people, you know, I'm speaking for myself, but sure. I feel like a lot of people feel there was something that's just missing. You mm. know, that's your brother yeah it's just missing so it was a really hard transition everybody was so strong and so amazing and you know we move on and that's what we do it's yeah. life um it was really weird though you're like we never nobody ever experiences that really like no. there's not a lot of shows not- you lose a character um and you lose a beloved character and a, a friend um so you're like what do you do <laughs> and that, it's and like that, you don't even not know. Not a lot of shows and the biggest show yeah. on TV, essentially. Yeah. One of the biggest shows. Yeah. So it was it was weird <laughs> for a while um, and never I, forgotten. I remember the next episode was just heartbreaking. Oh, I don't even want to talk about that. It's, it was so hard to do. Um, and the way and I like to look at it is like we got our memorial. We got our time with him. We got our way to say goodbye. Like, um, And the fans didn't. So that was for them. Right. You know, for them to say Gosh. goodbye to Finn. And wasn't, it wasn't Leah and, and him dating? Yeah, dating? they were dating at the time. Oh so it was gosh, even a whole other. Imagine. She's the one of the strongest people I know. How do you go on? She came in and did the episode with us. You know, she only came in a little bit because, oh. you know, she shouldn't have been around at all. But, um, <laughs> um, 
you know, you did, she, she was dealing, she was doing her own, you know, sort of mourning and grieving. Wow. But she came in and did the song, and that was heartbreaking. And oh my you've, gosh. you know, if you watched yeah, yeah, it, you saw course. it. But uh, yeah, they were dating at the time. They did for a long time before that. Um, and they were, they made each other better. <laughs> wow. So it was, you know, we loved it. It was great to see them together and to have, uh, like mom and dad sort of lead the way. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, but you move on, you yeah. do and you appreciate it. And we never forgot him. I mean, like we talked about, you know, the script talked about him all the time. Like right, right, our right. characters flashbacks. About him. Yeah, yeah. Which were like killer, but, oh. um, we, we, that had to happen. I mean, you have to keep him yeah. in the show. Yeah. Incorporated. How have you stayed so grounded? <laughs> um, biggest I, I biggest show in the world. Fans everywhere. I mean, look at it now. We're, we're all, you know, trying to get the next job. And and we're all like human beings. Right. So it's one of those things you just like a keen sense of awareness keeps you and humility keeps you down to earth, you that, know. That's another thing. Uh, it's like how does... How do you and your cast, your your family handle like being the biggest, most <laughs> important people to, I wouldn't say irrelevant, but I mean, just like, now what? You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, like no. Saying, I mean, like really, it, it keeps you. Because I don't know a... any of the, any of the ca- <laughs> cast members who are on TV. No, not right now. I don't think so. Yeah. So it's like. I mean, people are doing stuff. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, we're all working hard. Of it's course, just a of matter course. of, yeah, going from something to, to absolutely like 180 to you know, you're in park for a second. Right. Um, we're human. Mm. I mean, like I, you go to Comic Con and like you see, like I like to call Comic Con like, you know, like camp for celebrities, mm-hmm. <laughs> where you go and hang out with your friends. Like it's the one time I know I get to see like a lot of my friends who are off doing movies and off, you know, in Atlanta or mm-hmm. Vancouver, and so and you just remember like these people are human and they're your friends and they're normal and they don't, this isn't everything that they are. Um, and you can get lost in that so easy. We did, you know, um, because we had to, you have to like sort of give into the Hollywood life. You have to give into, um, getting your hair and makeup done all the time and going to these mm-hmm. events and just putting on a good face. Yeah. Um, and acting like a big deal. And Yeah, I mean, there were days that, like, you know, I would be, I would have a terrible day or something would happen with, like, my boyfriend and I or my family and you'd have to go to this event and put on a smile and yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, but that's, the, those are the things that bring you back real fast. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm, my parents also have always taught me that from the beginning because they put me in the business so mm-hmm. for so early and child stars can be crazy. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they were always like, Jenna, just remember to keep a good head on your shoulders. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So I owe it to them. How many tattoos do you have? Uh, I think 23 now. 23? Yeah. They're all little though because yeah. I don't have a sleeve or anything. But they're like, I have my feet and my ribs and my back. And What's the most meaningful one to you? Oh, goodness. Um, well, they all have meaning. Of course. <laughs> um, well, meaningful to myself. Yes. Inej is backwards. It's Jenna backwards. Oh. My dad calls me that. Um, and I did my lucky number 28 in Roman numerals because, and my dad always plays that for like lottery and stuff. Mm. So um, that's for my family, my dad. And then this one we got for Tina. I got for Tina. For a glee. Um, and then like the rest. Well, this one too, because me, Leah and Kevin were in Chicago. I think it was during Oprah time. And we like took a cab and we were like, we're going to a tattoo parlor. And we all got imagined because he wow. just finished that song, you know, with the um, the deaf students. Oh, wow. And we did uh, imagine and they signed it. So oh we all gosh. got imagine somewhere. That's cool. What's yeah. uh, what's the next tattoo? What would you get? I, I'm actually um, want to go get another one while I'm here. <laughs> uh, I said I wouldn't do any more, but uh, I want to do the Taurus constellation. Mm. Okay. That's probably next. Okay. I love it. <laughs> uh, a few more questions for you. Sure. I feel like I could talk to you for. <laughs> um, how are, how are you handling? Let's say rejections that come up now, and let's say. <laughs> I don't want to say you're getting rejected. I, I get it. I no, I like get it. I'm doing that because I but literally, like, but it's like, hard. You know, it's hard. I'm saying there's a lot of people that, that put themselves out there and then yeah. that are looking to get a job and people say no. Yeah. Put, you know, try to do business deals that are, you know, what are You know, I have to keep in mind, I've been going through it because this is pilot season. And for people who don't know, pilot season is like when all the new TV shows do their pilots and then the networks look and say, we're going to pick 
three out of the ten. Right. So all the characters are being cast right now, and I've gone out on a plethora <laughs> of auditions, <laughs> and they're great. You know, they're going really well. Mm-hmm. Um, you're making relationships even yeah. if you don't get the job, and you're making good impressions. Of so. Um, but how do you handle it? So it's hard. I mean, literally day to day, it's up and down. I'm like, I love LA and I love this. <laughs> and then the next day I'm like, I hate everything. Yeah, I'm right. quitting. Um, you have to keep in mind the right project is going to come at the right time. Mm. Not every project. I mean, I'm 110% at everything I do yeah. from waking up in the morning and drinking my coffee. Like, you know, You're it's just it. like everything. Yes. Is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, you can't get married to the parts mm. before you book them. Right. I have to like let it go. Let it go. Um, and you have to remember that it's just the right timing and the right character and it's going to all happen. Like there was a pilot I did for Disney years, years ago. And during that time, I would have been for the six years. It yeah. didn't get picked up. Um, well, it did, but I got recast actually. Um, they brought in a different woman to play the role. And had I done the show while it was running, I wouldn't have been able to audition for Glee. Mm. So like everything just, yeah. it all makes sense. Of course, yeah. Um, so that's what I keep in mind. But I don't, it's it's really like a day to day. And yeah. I live, I'm living with um, my best friend, Kevin, who plays Artie right now. Oh, really? And cool. we're both auditioning and we keep each other sane. Uh, here, here in LA. Here. I'm staying with him. Gotcha. Yeah, and um, we're great. We are, we've are. we always been the awesome. best of friends. And, he's he's you know, very talented, too. He's, ingr- he's insane. He's His literally harmonies, insane. Whenever he sings and harmonies, he can dance, like, and he can sing, and he can write, and he's just The episode smart. where he got to dance, I was like, <laughs> I know. Yes. We were all so happy. <laughs> it was amazing. And on tour, like, we'd wake up in the morning and go get breakfast, and then they go around the city together. So, yeah. like, everything we did was just... That's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'd do without him, but... Even during pilot season now, like we keep each other in check. We run lines with each other. We That's cool. Um, when we're having a bad day, like we'll go and he's like, let's just go get like cheeseburgers or something and, That's cool. you know, try and forget about it. So it is good to have a support system here. That's cool. That's um, cool. Yeah, it's hard though. It is hard, hard, hard. There are days we both had one really bad day this time and <laughs> we're laying on the couch like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> when you were on the top of the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you go from something and then we look at each other, we're like, I missed that show. <laughs> <laughs> it's wow. one of those things sometimes. Amazing. Um, <laughs> now, I think I read you have a breathing exercise, right? That you, you follow or you practice. Do you have a breathing exercise? I try. I don't have one that I I stick to. Mm. Um, so something different. It's all about you know like when I go to sleep at night. I try to when I can't fall asleep. Um, I try not to. Do, I used to take melatonin a lot and like yeah. try or do something to make me go to bed. Relax. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's just focusing on my breathing. That's good. Um, How important like, is your breathing for you? Oh, it's everything. I mean, literally <laughs> everything. <laughs> um, I need to. And sometimes like. At stoplights, uh, I'll put my car in park and I'll close my eyes. I know it's probably not the safest. My therapist said it was okay to do that. <laughs> and I just close my eyes and um, and I listen to my breathing. And um, I'll just like say something to myself, either it's whether it's something that I'm grateful for or mm. whatever's going through my head. And it's just, you know, be quiet, Jenna. And then like I'll open my eyes and I'll, you know, it'll light a little, somebody will honk at me and I'll go <laughs> or... Um, it'll be before the light change. Sure. That's cool. I yeah. like it. Okay. Final few questions. Okay. I'm going to keep saying this every question. It's probably. fine. <laughs> <sighs> How do I want to wrap this with you? I want to ask the question. If you could say one sentence to your biological mom and your biological dad, and that would be the only sentence that say they're both alive. Okay. And you could say one thing to them each. And that'll be the only thing you'll ever get to say to them for them to hear about you. They don't even know what you've created in your life. They okay. don't even know you're alive. Okay. Um, they don't know where you're headed, what you've done, where you've been. But they get one sentence each to hear. This is like a lot of pressure. <laughs> I didn't give her time to prep for this. No, no, no. So it's this good, is just good. off the cuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, no. I'll definitely. Okay. I'm, te- I'm, I'm the, 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 the casting director telling you to improv. Here. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so tell me. So mom, mom and dad. Your mom. No, you get one sentence for each. It'd be the same. Okay. Um, so you get two sentences. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, mom and dad, thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to have a better life than you could give. Um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm healthy. 
Um, I'm living wholeheartedly. I do not take what you did for granted. Um, and I love you and I hope you're happy. Mm, that's beautiful. Thanks. That's great. Um, the, the final three questions that I ask everyone. Okay. First one is what are you most grateful for in your life recently? Um, my God, my new goddaughter. Mm. Um, she's taught me a different to have a different perspective, which I hadn't had in a while. Yeah. Um. And I'm most grateful for being alive. I'm grateful that I get to go on auditions and I get to live comfortably <coughs> while I'm not. And I get I have wonderful friends, and that I'm realizing like what makes me happy and not making excuses for it mm. or, you know, not having to apologize for it. Yeah. 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 That's cool. So this is, uh, since you're going to live for another hundred years, this is <laughs> hundred years from now. It's your last day. Uh, You've had an incredible life. Okay. You've had a lot of great men in your life, a lot of great friends, incredible family. You've achieved everything you wanted to achieve. Every dream possible, Whoa. it's happened. Okay. And then some. And you're peaceful. Everything's good. But your books, your movies, Glee has been erased from time. So no one has any uh, – they can't watch or read anything that you've ever done. But your great, great, great granddaughter or someone comes up and says, you got a piece of paper and a pen to write down three truths. The three things you know to be true about your entire experience, your life, from all the ups and downs, the beautiful things. This will be the only thing that we get to, re to remember your message by that's written down. What would you write down as the three truths that you know to be true about your experience and that other people should focus on in their life as well? Um, one of them would be my truth is living for the bigger picture, living for the greater good, knowing that what I was doing left a mark that was bigger than myself. Um, number two would be living with the awareness of living with self-worth and self-love um, or trying to every day. Mm. Um, and three, one of the, the third one would be something about living a life that is not led by fear, but led by challenges that allowed you to expand and grow and learn continually. Mm, I love it. It's a great truth. I love it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that was a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's all right. It's just you know, it's your last day. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I ask the final question. Okay. Where is the best place to connect with you online? You've got a new podcast. What's it called? Yeah. So my podcast is called Infinite Positivities. I love it. Uh, and you can search at willradio.com for all of our podcasts. Um, or you can go to iTunes yeah. and search Infinite Positivities or Jenna Ashkowitz, um, which has been so much fun. And it's actually yeah. like I learned, I mean, I'm sure you know, it's you learn so much about people so and about much. yourself and... It's such a cool experience. I'm loving it. That's great. Um, also, uh, I'm Jenna Ushkowitz at Instagram, Twitter, and is that it? Facebook. Is there more? Yes, and at Facebook. Yes. <laughs> and that's it. I mean, yeah. Cool. And the book, Choosing Glee. And Choosing Glee. Make sure to check it out. It's a cool, cool great book. Ten Rules of Finding Inspiration, Happiness, in the Real You. I love it. Um, before I ask the final question, mm -hmm. I want to acknowledge you, Jenna, for your incredible positivity, your incredible Thank joy, you. your love. You just express <laughs> so much of it constantly. 
Thank you. I try. On, whether it be on the, the work you're creating, this book, I experienced it, and meeting you for the first time, mm-hmm. just right when I saw you walk in the door, I was just like, I got to give her a big <laughs> hug. <laughs> you did. It was so nice. <laughs> so I want to acknowledge you for the life you've lived where you could easily have questioned, why did this happen to me? Why am I here? Where's my real family? All these mm-hmm. are the questions, but you lived with positivity. You showed up every single day, and you followed your dreams of doing what you loved. Thank you. And I want to acknowledge you for taking risks hmm. and and doing things out of your comfort zone which <laughs> created magic in your life yeah it does and the thing that you created on glee saved thousands of lives and i want to acknowledge you for the countless hours of work and commitment when you maybe didn't want to be there to stick it out and give hmm. your best because you literally changed the world thank you so very i acknowledge much. you for all of your incredible gifts thank you the final question is what's your definition of greatness? <clears throat> greatness is, to me, um, always reaching and always working to hit your best self, uh, your most complete self. Um, greatness is showing up, um, when you didn't think you could, um, greatness is happiness. There you go. (laughs) Jenna Oshkowitz, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. I appreciate you. That's awesome. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking right here to subscribe because each week we come out with awesome, epic, and inspiring interviews and messages and videos just for you. So click subscribe right here to get notified of new videos every week. Also, if you enjoyed this specific interview, we've got a lot of great interviews like this that are uplifting and inspiring. So click right here to watch the previous interviews because the people I've had on are pretty cool and epic as well. So click here to watch previous interviews. Click here to subscribe. I love you guys, and I'll see you very soon.